coming after me. There's no shadow. There's no shadow you won't lie at. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. Come on, there's no shadow. God good this morning. He is so good and he is so faithful. I love the words of this song. No shadow he wouldn't light up. No wall he wouldn't kick down. Now I don't know about y'all but man in my life I've had to have those walls kicked down plenty of times because of me. But the good thing is that God was always faithful. He was always faithful to come after me, no matter what the obstacle, no matter the wall that I built to put in front of me and him, he was always faithful to say, you know what, we're going to tear the walls down that you built up. Instead of a wall, we're going to build that into an altar. And so this morning, I want to encourage you that it doesn't matter where you are, how much you've sinned, how much you, you think you've done, how far you've ran, or maybe you've never even given Jesus a chance, that today is your day. That today is your day to say, God, I'm ready. Because a God that is willing to come after us, the creator of the universe, the creator of life, to say, I will stop everything for you. For you. It's a miraculous thing. So why don't we lift our hands here as we are going to sing this next part. Not just words, but as a declaration, as an anthem, saying, God, you are coming after us, that nothing in heaven, nothing on earth, nothing under the earth will separate us from God. So come on, we sing it out. Oh. Church. 
We are so glad that you chose to spend part of your weekend with us. Pastor Alicia will be up in a moment, but before she comes, here are some things happening around North Rock Church. If today is your first time at North Rock, we want to say thank you for coming. You are a VIP and we are so excited to have you. Do us a huge favor and fill out a connection card in the seat in front of you and drop it off at our VIP tent on your way out today. Our team would love to say hello, answer any questions you have, and give you a gift to say thank you for being with us today. We hope you enjoyed your time with us, and we hope to see you again soon. At North Rock, we believe everyone should be connected to the local church, and we would love for North Rock to be that church for you. The way you get connected at North Rock is through Growth Track. Growth Track is happening next Sunday, immediately following the second service at 11.15 a.m. in the office complex next to our building. At Growth Track, we'll tell you about North Rock, about membership, and give you the opportunity to join our Rockstar team. Lunch will be on us and we'll even take care of your kids. So come join us for Grow Track and start making a difference in the lives of others. We love our small group community and we hope you've all had a chance to establish great life-giving friendships through your groups. While our small group semester is coming to a close, opportunity for community never truly ends. Our summer small group semester will launch in late June. So stay tuned for training opportunities if your next step is becoming a small group leader. Hey students, the summer semester of the North Rock Internship is just around the corner. If you're looking to grow as a leader, the North Rock Internship is just for you. You'll be immersed in the innovative culture of North Rock Church while learning directly from the staff members and local community leaders. Registration is open for ages 16 to 23. Check out NorthRockSA.com to register now. You might have a mom, she might be the bomb, but ain't nobody got a mom like her. Her love's to the end, she's my best friend. Ain't nobody got a mom like her. She's my world, she's my heart, and there's no denying. charge of this entire circus that's going on around me and it's my job to make sure that all the acts are going off without a hitch. Energetic and fun and challenged and patience. I'm always praying for God to give me more patience. Patience, definitely. Stop feeling like I'm not good enough. I think as moms we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to to be more. I wish as a mother I, I didn't get caught up in the game of perfection trying to be perfect. She wears makeup all the time. So it's 
be mean to us or anything, that she's just always there for us. It's cool, funny, fun. Sometimes while she's like um, cooking, she puts on this music and then she dances to it and it's really funny. Cuteness and niceness. That's really the main thing. Cute, 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 nice, cute. I love her and she's good to me. Loving person, very, and very much in God's word. I just love my kids so much. I love seeing them growing up and becoming who they're gonna be and being able to be part of that. What I love about being a mom is watching these little people that you have had since they were babies and seeing them grow and learn and develop a personality. I think we're hard on ourselves because we want to be the best and so we want to give our kids everything, you know? So when we fail at one thing, I know I'm hard on myself. It's like, oh, you know, you played a scenario. I could have done it differently. I think we should stop being so hard on ourselves. And that's probably one thing I do too much. I love that I get to be the best version of myself with them. And I have the grace to be the worst version of myself with my children. I think it's so important that we, we own the moments of wonder and we embrace the moments of pain because seeing brokenness healed and restored as a mom through the eyes of our children and those amazing relationships we're blessed with, there's nothing more powerful and more beautiful and more vibrant. Happy Mother's Day, camera. There I am. Well, happy Mother's Day to you. We are so glad that you chose to spend a part of your Mother's Day here at North Rock Church. And um, I just want to tell you, happy Mother's Day. You look beautiful today. What a great crowd we have here today. And I'm Alicia Moore. I'm Pastor Jonathan's wife. And actually, before I get started sharing with you what the Lord has shared with me today, I want to do um, an item of business that um, we started last week. It was a contest for our big giveaway today. And the big giveaway was actually a spa day. I think it, it was like the Manny Petty. Um, a massage and a facial, all in one. How cool is that? And the way that you entered was you posted about your mom um, on social media, and then whoever we chose gets this prize. And so our winner this year is none other than Holly August. Can you give it up for Holly? Yay! Holly, actually... I know because I've been here all four services that Holly was here last service. So um, she got to get her prize and she came and showed it to me. It was just perfect. So um, before I get started, I do want to um, read a declaration to you from Pastor Jonathan, myself, and from your church family. Here it goes. We acknowledge the challenge that this day brings for many, for those who've lost their mother, for the single mom who never planned to do this alone, may you be strengthened by your heavenly father. For the mother who strives to balance work outside the home with love inside the home, may you be given strength, validation, and hope as you go in between worlds. For those who've lost a child, those who don't have a relationship with their children, for those who are stepmoms, Moms who had poor mothers themselves but refused to allow that to continue. Those who have no biological children of their own but are mentoring and leading others. We acknowledge the difficulty of the day. We bring, I mean, we pray for your guidance and peace. May you feel honored and may you find joy, fulfillment, and happiness that you so desire and deserve. Come on, let's give it up one more time for all of those precious mamas out there. I also want to give honor um, to my mother. Her name is Deborah Bridges. And some of you may know her and have met her. She pops in and out here sometimes. And such a woman of God, such a woman of grace, um, such a generous woman, a woman of prayer. And there is no doubt that I would not be where I am today 
without my mom. So I honor you, mom. And also, I don't want to leave out my mother-in-law, who is actually my late mother-in-law. We lost her about a little over two years ago. And although she is gone, she has left such a legacy. And she gave me the greatest gift ever in her, her, her youngest son, my sweet, handsome husband, Jonathan. What a blessing. I love you, Miss Janice. All right, let's jump into what I'd like to share with you today. If you have your Bibles, I'd love for you to turn with me, or you can look on the screen here. And I want to share a beautiful story about a mother in the, in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, as you can imagine, Mary tried to think what in the world the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. You will name him Jesus, and he will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestors, David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this be? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. Verse 36, what's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your sweet presence that is already here and we sense you right now. Thank you, Lord, for all of our incredible moms that have come today. Lord, I pray that you would just open our hearts and our minds, every one of us, God. There is a reason that we're here. It's... Um, it is for a reason, God, and we pray that our hearts and our minds would be open to hear your word and let us leave change today, not the same, Lord. Let us at least take a little nugget home of encouragement in Jesus' name, and most importantly, Lord, I want these ladies to feel honored and loved and leave encouraged. In Jesus' name, I pray, and everybody said, amen. amen. Did you know that no matter who you are today, no matter where you are, what stage of life that you are in, whether you are, feel you are young or you feel that you are old, that God has a purpose and a calling for your life, a next step for you and you alone to accomplish. So today, I'm going to share with you five positive responses that we need to have when God calls us to that assignment. See, God is calling each one of you. No one is exempt here today. No one is exempt. He's calling you to something, no matter what it is. I want to share with you these five, what I'm going to call up responses. And you might be asking, like, what, is, what does that mean, up responses? Well, you know when you're talking to your children and you say stuff like, clean up, sit up, straighten up, chin up, and sh I mean, Hush up. No. I'd be honest, we actually say the S word in our house. It's S-H-U-T, right? <laughs> no, so obviously today I am going to be talking a little bit more to our moms, but my hope is that no matter what God has called you to do, that you can apply these five responses of up that I'm going to share with you. All right, y'all ready? Here we go. The first one is this. If you're taking notes, it's listen up. Everybody say, listen up. Listen up. Anybody ever have trouble getting your kids' attention? Yeah? So we have a two-story house, and the boys basically lived on the sec live on the second floor, and we're on the first floor. And so 
so many times I find myself trying to get their attention, and I'm on the bottom floor, and I'm yelling up to them, boys, it's time to eat, or whatever it is. And they don't seem to hear me. And the fact is, I'm pretty sure they are hearing me, right? Y'all been there? I'm pretty sure they're hearing me. They're just not listening. They're not listening. And the reason they're not listening is because they really don't want to hear what I have to say. Because <laughs> usually when mom's yelling upstairs to the boys, it's because I want them to do something that they don't want to do, like stop with the Xbox and come eat dinner, or come take this trash out, or stop doing what you're doing and get ready. We've got to leave. We're going to be late if you don't come right now, right? So if I were to ask you today, if you thought you were called to positively influence the people around you, your coworkers, your family, your children, you would say, of course. You would say, yes, why, of course. But my question to you today is this. Are you listening to that call Are you listening to that call? See, as Christians, we are all called to the Great Commission, right? We're all called to reach the lost with the message of Jesus. Are you listening to that call? As students, middle school, high school, and college students, we are called to be a witness to the peers around us. Are you listening to that call? As a spouse, we are called to love and cherish our spouse like Christ loves the church. As parents, as moms, as dads, we are called to that position. So I'm going to take us back to our story real quick. In verse 28, it says this, Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her. You have found favor with God. Favor with God. Now, there's so many questions. Um, When I read this again this last week when I was studying, uh, there's just so many questions about the first portion of this story. Because why in the world would God choose a woman who had not even been a mom yet? You would think that he would have chosen a woman with experience being a mom. I mean, after all, she's going to be the mom to the son of God. Hello. Why wouldn't he choose someone with experience? On top of that, why wouldn't he choose a woman who is at least married? How about it? Married? No, Mary was a virgin. She was not married. And on top of that, you might not know this, but Mary was a teenager. It is said that she was about 14 or 15 years old when this happened. Now, don't put them up yet, but I have a a picture of myself because I got to thinking, what did I think and what did I feel when I was 14 and 15 years old? And what did I look like? Because this week, I'll tell you, I was at a, um, a sports, like, athletic award ceremony. And there was, I was surrounded by lots of 14-year-old girls, beautiful 14-year-old girls. And I just got to tell you, I didn't look like that when I was 14. <laughs> so I'm about to show y'all what I looked like at 14. Are y'all ready for this? I don't think you are. <laughs> oh. That kind of looks like Britain, actually, doesn't it? Yeah, that actually does look, now that I just glanced at it real quick. Um, but you know what's so funny about this picture? And I don't know if y'all, if y'all are like this. No, the guys probably weren't, but the girls. Like, you can look back at pictures that were taken of yourself when you were little, and you think, oh, I loved that outfit so much. <laughs> like, I was so excited that they were taking my picture because I thought I looked so cute. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> That's awful. Okay, next, next. Oh, this is a luau. So I, my parents gave me a luau for, I think this is my 15th or 16th birthday. Yeah, my grandma made that little outfit for me. I'll never forget it. I'm so young, so innocent. You're so innocent and young at 15 and immature, right? right. Oh. oh, not sure how that one got in there. <laughs> Y'all do know who that is? It's not Mason. <laughs> It's your pastor. (laughs) No, um, you can take that out. (laughs) 
Um, so you see, you might be struggling to hear God's call because you can't imagine him using you. I'm sure Mary felt this way, and with good reason, right? We just went over all of those reasons. We ask ourselves, why did he call me to do this? Why am I the one chosen to raise this child? Why am I the grandmother that's raising this grandchild? And if you're not careful, you'll ask yourself right out of a call. You'll tune him out and you won't be listening and you'll ask yourself right out of your calling. See, the angel told Mary, you are favored. And God is telling you this morning, you are favored. I've called you. I've chosen you. Don't tune me out. Listen up. Listen up. All right? Let's go on with our story. Verse 29, she says, confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. And Mary asked the angel, but how can this be? How can this be? So my number two point today, if you're taking notes, is this. Simply, cheer up. Cheer up. Isn't it refreshing to know that Mary, even Mary, had questions? Even when she had an angel standing in her room, she had questions. She doubted. She was confused and disturbed. Have you ever been there? I know I have. Actually, when I look over my life, I've been there many times. Most recent time was a few months ago, and I don't know about you, but I... It feels like when it rains, it pours, you know, and like it seems like everything happens at once. And I'm of the opinion that things happen in threes, which sometimes that's good and sometimes that's bad. It depends on where you are. <laughs> if you're on the first one or you're the third one. I tell people when they say this happened and this happened and this happened, I'm like, well, thank God the third one's happened. So um, I was in that state here a few months ago and um, my grandma, I was really distressed because my grandma had taken a downhill spiral in her health and she was not doing well at all. And it was lots of stress and pressure on my parents, but I was very concerned about my grandma as well. And then one evening, about that same time, about in the same time frame, I got a phone call from my dad and he told me that he had been diagnosed with cancer colon cancer. And I don't know about you, but when I hear that word cancer, it's like a it's like a stab in the gut. And you think, "No, this can't be happening to me, not my family, not my parents." About that time, this about the same time frame I was being emotionally attacked by things gossip that I had heard that was being said about my family and I was like, "Oh my goodness, this too much happening at once, and you know how it is. Men, women, things keep going on. Household chores keep going on. The laundry still has to be done, and schoolwork has to be done. So you're asking, have you ever questioned God? You bet your bottom dollar I have questioned God. Did you know that Jesus questioned? He had questions. Listen to this. When he was on the cross, when Jesus was on the cross, Matthew chapter 27, verse 20, verse 46 says, at about three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lemma, something, I'm not sure, <laughs> something or another, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Can you believe Jesus? had a question, and he was thinking that he had been abandoned on the cross. How refreshing is that? I'm telling you this morning to cheer up. You're not the only one that had questions, and it's okay. It's okay to have doubt. Amen? Amen. All right. Third point. Let's go on. With our story, verse 35, it says, The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Everybody say overshadow. 
overshadowed. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. The word of God will never fail. So what do we do when we doubt, when we have questions? This is what it usually means. It usually means we need to, point number three, if you're taking notes, is fill up. Say, fill me up. Say it again. Say, fill me up. Yes. Romans chapter 15, verse 13 says this. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, that same spirit that the angel told Mary about that was going to overshadow her and impregnate her with the Son of God is the same spirit that we have access to. Isn't that awesome to know? We just have to access that power. We have to fill up with that power. Here, here's the deal. Here's the deal, though. If we're totally equipped and we know we're confident in the task and the calling that we have got before us, we don't feel like we need him. But the bottom line is that God wants to show himself strong. He wants to show himself strong to you, but you have to access that power. It's kind of like this. It's kind of like me being in my kitchen, preparing like sandwiches for, for the kids and, and for my husband like at lunch or whatever. And I go to the refrigerator and I pull out a jar, a brand new jar of pickles. And I'm trying to get that jar open. And if you know anything about me, you know that I am actually, kind of, I can kind of be kind of a stubborn and independent individual. And so I'm like, well, George, I'm going to get this jar open. I'm trying everything, I'm, you know. Banging it on the, on the counter. Have y'all ever done that? It's kind of risky, but it actually works sometimes. Um, but all the while, Jonathan is sitting on the other side of the bar. Jonathan, my sweet, handsome husband with the big guns, is sitting right there across the, the, the bar, and I don't access his power. How silly is that? Actually, I've learned that you need to access that power. <laughs> Give it to them, let them open it, makes them feel really good about themselves, right? <laughs> um, you see, God knew that it was going to be a battle, and the battle is real. And I want to remind you today that there is a spiritual battle going on for your family and for your children. Until you understand that, you won't want to, you won't feel the need to even access that power. You see, when we're looking at, your, at ourselves and, and analyzing the fact that we are insufficient and we don't have what it takes to do the job before us, you have to know that you're right. You're right. Moms, dads, grandparents, whoever you are today, no matter how insufficient you feel, no matter how unqualified you are or how daunting the task may feel, Whatever you're calling, whatever that dream is that God has given you, whatever that little miracle is that God has given you to raise, I encourage you, implore you to let the Holy Spirit be your guide and fill up with him and let him make himself strong through you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Clap your hands for that. Thank you, Lord, that we have access to that power. One other thing that's super cool about this story that actually never um, really picked up on until this week, but the angel actually encouraged Mary with another faith story, which I think is so cool. See, when he was talking about how Elizabeth was barren in her old age, but God performed the impossible in her life, he was simply building Mary's faith by reminding her of what he had already done. And God has done that for us as well. This word is full of tons of stories of faith for our faith to be built, right? Not only that, not faith comes by hearing, yes, and hearing by the 
word of God. So where do we hear the word of God? Of course, we read the word of God, but we also hear the word of God week in and week out here at church. Did you know that every weekend, God has a word for you right here? Amen? He has a word for you. And no matter what stage of life or where you are in your life, it doesn't matter what even is so interesting to me because, um, you know, the word can go forth from up here and everybody gets the thing that they need. God is so big that way. Don't you love that? Not only that, but God can work through small groups. God can work through serve teams. When you are a part of these things, you're around people who have had things awesome happen in their life that God has done, and they get to share that with you, and your faith is built for whatever you are facing. The flip side of that is that I would encourage you to share these faith stories with your children. Anytime you hear of something or God does something Share it. Share it right then so you don't forget. Tell your children about how awesome the Lord is. So I encourage you today just to fill up with his spirit and realize that you do not have to do this assignment on your own. All right? My fourth point today is simply this. Show up. Show up. Say show up. Show up. You know, sometimes we just have to show up to our assignment over and over and it's not easy sometimes, right? In, in the verse uh, 38, Luke chapter 1, verse 38, Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Now, do y'all really understand everything that Mary had to endure? <laughs> she had to endure a lot. And I'm pretty sure she know, she did not know. She did not know what all this task was going to um, bring with it. She was made fun of, I'm sure. She was ridiculed for being pregnant and not married. When she, she had to ride a donkey all the way to Bethlehem, almost nine months pregnant. She had her baby in a stable with animals. Then, as if that wasn't enough, she had to watch her baby be beaten before the crucifixion. And then she watched her baby as he hung on the cross and ultimately died there while she watched. No, I'm pretty certain she did not understand what she was going to have to endure. But she kept showing up. She kept surrendering. She kept saying, here I am. I accept it, and that's what we need to do today. We need to keep showing up to our assignment. See, it's not always smooth sailing. We mess up. We make mistakes. Things go wrong. Sometimes they go bad wrong, right? I mean, we're going to get some disappointing phone calls sometimes, sometimes from the principal, sometimes from our teenagers, sometimes from our grown adults, adult kids. Sometimes we might have to sit in a hospital room with our child in the hospital bed and we're sitting next to them and we're wishing to God we could switch places. And it's in those moments that we have to say, I'm showing up, God. I don't understand everything, but I'm here and I'm your servant. Do you think Mary really understood the extent of the plan she was a part of? No, I doubt it. And we don't either. We don't either. We can't see the end game. I'm pretty sure if we saw the end game, <laughs> we might not accept it in the first place. We don't see everything that's going to happen in between. But see, God has a great big plan. And it's our job just to show up, keep surrendering to him, and watch him use us in his incredible big plan. And finally, I want to focus in a little bit on our moms today because I know and you know that being a mom in 2018 is no doubt a really tough job. And although we live in a much different life than, than when Mary was around, I feel sure that we have a lot of the same issues, fear, 
we struggle with a lot of fear, the unknown. We have feelings and weights of expectations. We have comparisons that we put on ourselves. We compare each, you know, one another. But mainly we put on a lot of ridiculous, ridiculous amount of expectations when you think about it. Now, some of these are good things, and some of these are things that we don't have to have, but a lot of the things are just responsibilities. And even as you're sitting here today, I could imagine that you've been thinking about some of the things, and I'm going to list some things that may have been rolling around in your head, as I said, even as you're sitting here today. I'm going to list these and see if any of these resonate with you moms. Gosh, so-and-so is coming over to my house after church today. Is there dust on my bookshelf? When was the last time I even read a book? That's the, that's the mamas with the baby, with the two and three, whereas I can tell you right now. Are my kids really all right? I should check Instagram. Why am I wasting all my time on Instagram? Why does everyone seem to have cute pictures of themselves having fun, fun with good friends on Instagram? Have I worked out enough this week? I have nothing to wear. Uh, like I said to everybody in the previous services, I, I said that this weekend. Yesterday, I was standing in my closet, and I said, this is the most ridiculous thing. I've got all these clothes, and I'm still saying I have nothing to wear. For whatever reason, when I get on stage, I think I need something new, right? <laughs> women, women, yes. No, this is actually not new, but anyways. Um, hmm. When was the last time I washed bed sheets? <laughs> Y'all feel me? Are we building up enough money for retirement? That's a real one. It's always in the back of my head. Is my marriage still intact? And then there's the schedule stuff. Like, who's going to practice tonight? How are they going to get there? How is this all going to work? What's today? <laughs> what practices are tonight? Do I have money in the lunch account? I mean, there's just a gazillion things. And then, of course, there's always the dreaded everyday question of, what should we cook for dinner tonight? Oh, don't y'all get tired of that. And then there's lots of weights that we carry around, like just like luggage and bags and purses. I've got some props over here to help me out. Oh, let's see here. Yes, of course. We want to stay fit. We want to stay fit because we want to be alive when our children uh, have their, their children. We want to be a good grandma and a great grandpa. Oh, yes, this one's good. We want to cook not just food. We want to cook real food with no preservatives. And I think the cool thing right now is to say we're going to eat clean. I don't know what the heck that, heck that means, but I was like... All of my food is clean. I don't know what y'all been doing, but anyways, such pressures that we put on us. All right, let's, some of these are good. Some of these are good, like this one. Read your Bible. Don't we all need to read our Bible? Yes, yes, good things. Okay, oh, yes, of course, we need to serve at the church. These are all great things. Yes, I need to give back. Okay, oh, I've been on Pinterest, and oh, my goodness, my house, I, I need to do something with it because it is definitely not photo ready like all of the other houses on Pinterest that I'm looking at. Oh, let's see here. Yes, yes, I definitely, I need to mentor someone, right? I've got something to give back to, to someone younger than me. And then there's, oh, you remember that um, awards ceremony that I went to this week? Oh my goodness. All of the moms were dressed so cute. And I was so 2017. I have got to get with it. Right? I need to go shopping because I don't dress well enough. I need to dress well. And then there's all the things that we have to track. Like this. Time spent with our aging parents. Hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, spend time with kids. Spend quality time with kids. And then, oh, what's this one? Let me see here. Oh. <gasps> Intimate encounters with husband. Yep. 
Um, <laughs> I couldn't leave that one out. 2018, women have got to be confident, right? We're confident. Yeah. Oh, what else we got here? Whew, I can barely carry all this stuff. Let me see here. Oh, yes. Been reading a blog. You're cool if you read blogs, and you're really cool if you write a blog, right? And it's telling me to take time for myself and be present. Good night. How do I keep up with all of this stuff that I'm supposed to be doing? And what is this? Oh, yes. I am so boring, apparently, because I have been on Instagram or whatever social media, and all everybody else is traveling, and I am so boring. Oh, I've got to start doing something fun like them. <sighs> and we hold so many weights. And we put so many responsibilities and pressures and expectations and comparisons on ourselves that it's absolutely ridiculous. And it feels like if you put one more thing on you that you're just going to topple and you're going to crash and burn. I'm pretty sure Mary felt this way. We're not the only ones who feel this way. I'm sure Mary, she could have. I, I want to share with you the response that she had. And this is huge. This is my fifth point, and I want you to get this one if you don't get any others. Instead of wallowing in her what-ifs, instead of thinking about all of her insufficiencies and how unqualified she was and how is this going to be and all the questions and the expectations and comparing herself to the others around her and instead of wallowing in all of that she actually ran to elizabeth her relative's house and while talking about her situation this is how she responded she responded with a beautiful song and i'm going to read a little bit of that song to you verse 46 it says mary responded Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he took notice of his lowly servant girl. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one is holy and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. And she actually continues on with this beautiful song of praise where Mary took her head and she quit looking at all of the things around her in the natural. She tilted her head up, just a 90 degree turn like this. And she, number five is look up. Look up and see the goodness of God. See how great he is. See who he really is. Go back to the one who first called you to this position. Go back to him and see through eyes of faith. Go back and see who he thinks you are and not just who you think you are. And when you look up, those ridiculous amount of crazy expectations, they'll disappear. Comparisons will vanish. When we look up, those promises that he's promised us will look clearer. Our mission will be clearer. We'll have a clear perspective on our situation. Psalms 121 says this. This is such a great scripture. You need to memorize this scripture. It says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. Do y'all believe that this morning? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. And we say that scripture and we mean it. We believe it. My help comes from you, Lord, maker of heaven and earth. And for some reason, we have no trouble believing that he made the heaven and the earth. We have no trouble believing that Jesus came to this earth 
that he died. He was a real man, and he came to this earth. He died and, and carried the weight of the world on his shoulders. He died on a cross. He was buried, and he was ascended into heaven. And we believe that one day he's going to come back for us, and we're going to live for, with him forever. But for some reason, we have trouble believing and having faith that he can see us through our troubles. And he can see us through our, our hardships. For some reason, we go way overboard with our expectations and we lose sight of the one who called us. See, when we look up, we see through eyes of faith. We don't see in the natural. We can see through eyes of faith when we look, just look up. Whatever that means to you. Maybe that means worshiping him. Maybe that means reading your Bible. Whatever it means for you, I encourage you today to quit looking at things right here. See through eyes of faith. See, when we look up, we see our children. Listen to this. We see our children as men and women of God leading their families. When we look up, instead of little brat emotional drama girls, I don't have one of those. But I've heard that they can be that way. We see women of God in the making. And when we look up, instead of punk teenage boys, we see men of God leading their, fa their families in the faith. So I encourage you to look up today. See through eyes of faith. And see your children the way God sees your children. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. It is so rich. It's so powerful, God. And we, we pray that we would take your word today and apply it to our life. God, we pray that we would listen up and let, let us open our ears and our hearts, Lord, to say to, to, to what you're calling us to do. Not to tune you out, Lord, but to truly listen to whatever it is that you are wanting us to do. God, I pray that we would cheer up. Let us give ourselves a break and realize that it's okay to doubt sometimes. That even Jesus doubted. Wow. Help us not to forget that point. And to fill up, Lord. Fill us up, God. Let us rely on your spirit to make us strong and Help us to quit doing things on our own and trying to do it on our own, but help us to fill up with your Holy Spirit and walk strong in you, Lord. And God, help us to show up. Help us to keep just showing up, keep surrendering our lives to you and keep saying yes to the calling that you have put on our life. And last but not least, Lord, I pray that we would look up when the weight of the world and the weight of our responsibilities are so heavy sometimes that we would look up, we would see your goodness, we would sense your grace, God, we would see through eyes of faith those children that you have given us to raise, God. We ask it in your precious, precious name. I'd like to continue to pray at this time. And you might be here and you're saying, Alicia, I, I actually since the Lord calling me because I've never given my life to him. I've never surrendered my life to him. And you might think you're far from Christ this morning, but I want to tell you right now, he is right here. He is close as the mention of his name. He is right here and he desires for you to listen up and to show up to that calling and you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have everything right. You just have to surrender and to believe that he is who he said he is, that he is your savior. So if you're here today and you would like to take that step of faith with all heads bowed and eyes closed, I'm going to ask you 
nobody looking around except myself and the, and the pastoral team. If that is you and you want to give your life to Christ for the first time today or maybe the first time in a long time, I ask you to raise your hand right now so I'll know who I'm praying for. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. You can put your hands down. I'm going to say a prayer right now, the significant prayer. And I want you to pray, and I want everybody to pray it with me in your own words. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for meeting me here today. God, I am lost without you, and I have to have you. And Lord, I believe that you are who you say you are, that you died for my sins. And I want you to be the savior of my life. I want you to take this mess that I've made myself and to fix me. Lord, I thank you for what you've done for me, Lord. I give you my life. I'm giving up today. In Jesus' precious name. Everybody said amen. Amen. Come on, let's give it up for all of those who gave their life to Jesus today. And come on, one more time. Let's clap our hands for everybody who took that step of faith. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's incredible. And hey, if you just took that step of faith and surrendered your life to Jesus, there's something we would love to ask you to do. We'd love for you to uh, take the connection card that's in your worship guide. Um, they're also in the seat back in front of you. They look like this right here. And, and at the very top on the back, the last option says, I, or the top option says, I committed my life to Christ today. We would love for you to check that box and fill the card out. And uh, if you get it filled out in time, you can drop it in the offering bucket in just a moment. Um, otherwise, you can take it by our Next Steps counter as you exit today on the left in the foyer, and you can give it to them. We just would love to have a record of this incredible decision that you made. So we thank you for doing that. We're going to prepare right now to give our weekend tithing and offering. And uh, part of our worship around here is, is our giving. And I want to thank you for your obedience and your willingness um, to give. Your obedience in the tithe, the 10%, and your, your generosity giving above and beyond that. This is an amazing church. And you make an incredible impact when you give. You help fuel God's work in this city, but not just in this city and in this church. Um, all over the United States, in, in, in church plants and, and other churches that we support, other ministries that we support, and in other parts of the world. Literally, you're making a global impact. And so I want to thank you for your giving. Thank you. We have multiple ways for you to live out your faith through giving. There's a giving kiosk in the foyer. Um, there's also, um, you can give online at our website. You can give via text giving in here or anywhere. Uh, you can give via bill pay. Uh, and you can give the old-fashioned way, the analog way, when the bucket come by here in just a moment. But however it is that you are giving, I want to thank you for it. You are making a difference, all right? Our ushers are coming. Our ushers are coming. And let me tell you about just a couple of things uh, while you are giving. First of all, next Saturday. Everybody say next Saturday. Hey, next Saturday, we have an opportunity uh, for you to serve if, if you would like to. We have um, a partnership in our city with an incredible ministry called Boysville. And Boysville helps provide a home for, for teenage boys and teenage girls that do not have a home and do not any way, honestly, to, to have food provided for them and so many things provided for them. And uh, we're, we're going to be going out to Boysville on Saturday morning and doing some landscaping, a little project for them. You have to be 16 and up, ages 16 and up. But if you'd like to be involved in that, we would love to have your help. And all you have to do is head on over to our website, northrocksa.com, and you can get signed up to serve uh, this coming Saturday morning. Also next weekend, also next weekend, um, we're doing something very special. We just finished, since Easter, literally since Easter, we've been in a series called Mind Monsters. And Mind Monsters was an incredible series. One of my favorite ever. Um, but, you know, all good things have to come to an end. Uh, but when something great comes to an end, you know, when God closes a door, he's always going to open a window and God, whatever. Um, but when one thing, good thing comes to an end, we know there's something amazing following. And I am pumped 
about a brand new series starting next weekend called Weird Stuff in the Bible. Weird Stuff in the Bible, and there's a lot of weird stuff. It's actually going to be difficult to pick what we're going to talk about because there's a lot of weird stuff. Um, but we're not just going to talk about how it's weird, obviously. It's amazing how some of these crazy stories have some life-changing implications for you and I. And I cannot wait. I've already been looking through some of the unique stories. And I can't wait to, to, to start this series next weekend. It's a great opportunity for you to bring somebody with you. Hey, we're going to talk about the weird stuff in the Bible. Oh, okay. Well, bring, bring somebody to church. Don't come alone. Bring somebody with you and uh, let us share the gospel. You do what we can't do by bringing your friends. And, and we will, I, I promise you, we'll share the gospel. They'll hear the, the message of Jesus and the love and the grace of Jesus. And they'll have that opportunity for life change. I'm excited about this brand new series. Did you enjoy Alicia today? Did you enjoy my wife speaking today? Incredible. Just before you go, I, 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 should, I, I should honor her. I have already in all three other services. Um, but this woman, is, is, is she's super mom. She has a 45-year-old baby in her house. She has an 18-year-old baby boy. And then a 15-year-old, would be 15 this month, baby boy. Basically, she's raising three baby boys. And uh, she takes really good care of us, making sure our food's taken care of and the bed sheets are changed and, and et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's unbelievable what she does in addition to that, she loves this church in such an amazing way, and I'm blessed to have that lady uh, on the first row and who spoke today in my life, and I honor you, Alicia. You are special. You are special. And I hope that you honor mom today. Listen, if you need prayer for anything before you go, um, our prayer team is standing in the back under that exit sign back there. They would love to pray with you. Don't leave the building without getting prayer if you need prayer. We would love to agree with you and pray over you if you need it. The rest of you can stand with me. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful day. Treat mama good today. We'll see you next weekend. God bless. I was lost with a